this video I'm going to show you how you can work with images in InDesign. So I'm going to show you some nice little uh, tricks and tips for working with images. But first of all, let's just have a look at how you get images onto a page in InDesign. Well, you can do Command D, which is to place. So that will open up your options here for selecting your images. So if I just choose one image and click open, what that will do is it will preload my cursor. Now, if I just click once, the image is placed full size. So that is the actual full size of the image. If I just undo that, so if I do a Command Z, it reloads my cursor. So you can either click to place your images or you can click and drag. Now, if you click and drag, you are resizing the image at the same time. So when I let go, the image is sized to what I want it to be as I clicked and dragged it out on the screen. Now, what's really important is to understand that there are two different areas when you're working with images. There's the frame that the image sits in. And then if I click on the image itself, on the little circle here in the middle, you can't quite see this, but it changes to like a brown sort of frame. Now that is me actually selecting the image itself. So what do these two different things mean? Well, if I just click off and select the frame itself, I can make the frame bigger. So this is the frame that the image is sitting in, but the image itself is not going to match the same size as this frame. If I was to right mouse click on the image and say fit and fill frame proportionally, then the image does fill the frame. If I was to reduce the frame size, I'm not actually going to make the image smaller. It's almost like I'm cropping the image. So as I change the frame size, the image doesn't actually get larger or smaller. You just see less or more of the image. What you can do is you can select the image that's inside. And then if you click and hold it, you'll see the full image. And what you can do is you can move that image around inside your frame window. So you can say what part of the image you actually want to show through the frame window. So I can just leave it like that, and that's how it is. If I select the frame itself and move it, they both move at the same time. But you have to be careful, sometimes you accidentally pick up the image frame, and then when you move that, you're not actually moving the window frame that shows the image, you're moving the image that's inside it all together. So I could be moving that image way outside of the frame, and then of course pull it back in. If you ever want the uh, image to fit within the frame, you've got that right mouse click and you've got those fitting options where you can fill the frame proportionally or you can fit content proportionally. I'm just going to go fill the frame proportionally and it will make sure that the image fills with inside the frame, but it won't distort the image. Okay, so that's a few things with working with images and identifying that there are two separate features to an image. There's the window that it appears through and there's also the actual image in the background. Just remember when you resize, you're not actually resizing the image, so just be a little bit careful with that. If you did want to resize both at the same time, you need to hold down the command and shift key and then when you grab a corner handle, you do actually resize both the image and the frame itself. So that's command and shift and then grabbing one of the handles will resize both objects at the same time. So that's a neat little trick there. If you place your mouse just outside on one of the corner edges, you get a little sort of bendy arrow, and that now means that you can rotate the image. So you can add a little bit of rotation around it as well. Um, I'm just gonna select the image again and uh, come back up here and change my rotation. So here, if you wanted to be really accurate, you could change the angle of rotation. So I'm gonna put it back down to zero. Another neat little trick with these uh, images as well is to apply rounded corners to them. Now, if you click this little yellow uh, square that we've got here on the image, it then changes the corners to these sort of yellow diamonds. Now, if you grab one of the corners in and move it, you're actually changing the border radius for all four corners. So that's a very, very quick way for you to apply rounded edges to your images. If I just undo that, the other way of doing that, of course, would be to come up here and you can apply rounded corners as well or different shape corners to your images and then change the rounding. To access the panel window, you hold down the Alt key and you click this icon here and it gives you the corner options. And then you can choose which corners you're gonna change. If I lock them all in and I change one to rounded, they all become rounded. And as I increase the size, you can see that you're rounding off the corners. The great thing about this compared to using the little uh, yellow square here is that you can actually come in and unlock that and you could say that I want actually this one to be square and I want this one to be square and then you can end up with that kind of effect where you have two rounds but two sort of square edges as well. So lots of different things that you can do there uh, with your images. 
Okay, another thing that I'm going to show you with images, so I'm just going to delete this one off the page, and I'm going to just going to do Command D again, is that say I want to put several images on the page. So what I can do is I can load up my mouse by holding down the Command key and selecting several different images. So I'm just going to pick up a few of these and click Open. Now once I've done that, I've got five images loaded onto my mouse cursor. Now you can just go click, 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 and all five images are now loaded in, all exactly on top of each other. They're all different sizes, but they're all loaded in on top of each other. Uh, you would then select all of them and then you could resize them. So that's one way to get your images in. I'm just going to undo that, so I'm just going to do a command Z. Now you'll see that my mouse cursor is still loaded with the five images. Another neat way of doing this is to click and drag out a box like this. Then use your right arrow key and you can then split that up into five separate sections. So I just press the right arrow key five times and then I can move this around, let go and it will fill those five boxes in with my images. Now at the moment the images don't fill the boxes but I could always right mouse click and tell it to fit and fill frame proportionally and there are my five images. So a really really quick way for you to load multiple images onto the page in one go is to load up your mouse cursor by selecting several images, click and drag out, and then use the arrow key to create those different kinds of boxes. And you can do it across the page, so if I just do a Command Z and undo that, and then I click and drag again, but this time use my down arrow key, sorry, my up arrow key, I can split it out into five boxes, and then let go and in go my images again. So using the up or the right arrow key, you can decide as to how you're going to place your images on the page. Currently they're all selected together, which means that if I grab one, they're all going to move together. If I was to resize them, they would all resize together in terms of the frames. Remember, if you wanted to resize it all, it's Command Shift, and then it will resize both the frames and the images that are inside the frame as well. To select multiple images, so I've clicked off now, so that means they all act independently of each other. But to select multiple images, you just hold down the Control key, sorry, the Command key, and the sh sorry, hold down the Shift key, and you just select all of your images just by holding down the shift key. So that's a little uh, exercise in working with images and getting to place images on the page.